<laughs> anyway, so it's, isn't it amazing? It's awesome to be fellowshipping and worshipping with so many familiar faces and new friends, isn't it? What a blessing. So when Sharon told me about the theme for me, about pondering, it got me wondering about pondering. So I was thinking, what makes us ponder? So I thought about sometimes famous quotes make you ponder. So there's, but sometimes famous, it depends on who's the one doing the quote. So I'm going to say a quote and see if you know, if you know who said it. It's like deja vu all over again. You guys know who said that? It was, base, it's a baseball thing, Baseball Hall of Fame, Yogi Berra. He was a professional Yogi baseball. Berra. Right. And trust me, this isn't going to be a sports talk. <laughs> but he, you know, that wasn't, he didn't misspeak. There's like a whole collection of these and you wonder, what was he thinking? So I'm going to just give you just a sampling. He said, when you come to the fork in the road, take it. I say what? I mean, really, seriously, you start to ponder it, and then once I say some more of these, you seriously will ponder about how does this man think? Here's another one. I usually take a two-hour nap from one to four. Okay. Another one. Pair up in threes. Take a while. Be fun to see us figure that out. Here's my favorite. Little League Baseball is a very good thing because it keeps the parents off the streets. <laughs> good. But then there are, there are quotes that make us ponder about life. So Chuck Swindoll said, We are all faced with a series of great opportunities, brilliantly disguised in impossible situations. And Martin Luther King Jr. said, Faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. Don't you hate that when God doesn't show you the whole staircase? Okay, and Tony Evans said, God will meet you where you are in order to take you where he wants you to go. And Corey Ten Boom said, let God's promises shine on your problems. Isn't that amazing? What a way to think. So, but let's talk about what is pondering, so we know what we're talking about. And it's more than just casual thinking. So I'll, I'll be sharing the things that, that Mary pondered and what we can ponder. And on your way out, I have a handout that tells you all the things that I'm talking about so you can ponder at home because pondering is going to take a lot more than just talking about. So, trust me, I'll hand this out, I promise. So the definition of pondering is to wonder and consider carefully. To consider something deeply and thoroughly. To think about something carefully, especially before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. So then I got to thinking about, well, when have I pondered? You know, once I thought about pondering, when have I really pondered? So when I was a little girl, there was a creek in our neighborhood and I like, it was like my solace. I would go to the creek and there was a huge boulder in the creek and I would sit in the middle on the boulder and I would just ponder nature all around me. I would look at the, for, the movement of the insects and the fish. I would look at the formation of the boulder and wonder how it got that way. I would wonder, I would ponder about which parts of the water glistened with the sun and why. So I pondered all of the surroundings. And during, when I was growing up, I grew up in a family that was a church-going family. Um, we went to church every Sunday. We said grace before every meal. We said our prayers at night. My dad was a vestryman. My mom was very active in the church. We did vacation Bible study. So we were very much active in our church. When I got to college, I got some news from home that was pretty devastating. And it just rocked my world. And my roommate, so I was in tears, and my roommate was trying to console me and comfort me, and I kept getting more phone calls that just made the whole situation even worse. And again, I would be crying, my roommate would try to comfort me. And finally, I got another phone call and I was crying, and I think my roommate was just frustrated. And in desperation, she said, well, I don't understand how you can call yourself a Christian and be crying. Now, first of all, I don't agree with that statement. Personally, I am a true follower of Christ, and I know, and I get a lot of mileage out of my tear ducts. <laughs> you know, I can cry when I'm sad, I can cry when I'm laughing, and I'll cry during worship because tears leak down out of my eyes because of my overflowing love of the Lord. But 
her comment really got me to ponder a worldview, actually. She was calling into question, did I really believe what I had been taught all my life? Were all those stories and traditions, were they just fun traditions and nice stories that I learned in Sunday school and in church? So I had to ponder. I had, we talked about pondering is sometimes it's to make a decision. So I had to make a very important decision. So I sat there and I thought, well, is it true? Do I believe, is, there, is God real? Do I believe that I'm a sinner? When the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, I knew all those things in my head, but all was a lot of people. I, did, that, did I really believe that I was included in that? Did I really believe that I was a sinner? And did I believe, if I was a sinner, then that there's a punishment for sin? The wages of sin is death. And that, did I believe that heaven and hell are real places? Did I believe that God sent his son to forgive my sin so that I could go to heaven and be with him forever? Did I believe all that? So, thankfully I did believe that. And the moment I believed that, I went from having religion to a relationship. I went from knowing Christ, from knowing about Christ to knowing Christ. Huge difference. You can know all about Christ, but when you're saved, you know Him. It's an intimate relationship. And, and also that was the first day that I took my first step as a true follower of Christ. It was also the first time I experienced that you could have God's peace which passes understanding that will guard your heart and your mind in the midst of great sorrow. And some of you are nodding, you know what that's like. That what an amazing thing, you can still be going through terrible trials, but still experience great peace in the midst of great sorrow. So, really, so, this, so I have an echo message, I'm calling it echo message, that I want it to resonate in your brain. And the echo message is, pondering Christ has a powerful impact. That was a powerful impact for me, personally, in my walk with the Lord. So, hold on. So we talked about the verse for the theme about pondering in Luke 2, verse 19, but Mary treasured all these things, pondering in her heart. So you have to wonder, what are these things? Well, the verse is right before there, the familiar passage. You all know it, but this is a good time to hear it again. This is what Mary was pondering. And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which should be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Luke 2, 8-14. So let's pick that apart, and we can see the things that Mary pondered that we can ponder too. So the first thing I thought about was Christ, she pondered Christ's birth was revealed to common shepherds. Ponder if you believe he will reveal or has revealed himself to you, and how. That's what you're going to take home in here, and you can ponder that. Ponder that he revealed himself to you. God told shepherds where and how to find Jesus. Ponder how he leads you to him in the midst of a crisis. Because for Mary, getting pregnant supernaturally was a crisis. Yet Mary was, was a by-faith kind of girl. She kept her focus on God's plan no matter what. I'm sure she pondered that God's son, king of all kings, was lying in a manger, which was a feeding trough for animals. Ponder how he humbly enters your world. Every day, every minute. Pon, pon, she pondered how the heavenly host praised God. Can you imagine the sound of that? So ponder how all of heaven rejoices.